lots of change for the Shockers over the summer. Coke Arena got a new scoreboard, the team got some new players, and the locker room got some new digs. All of this was set up for one of the biggest parties for Shocker basketball in recent memory. While the Roundhouse is a difficult place to travel to, something the Salinas Central girls teams know very well. The Lady Mustangs haven't won in McPherson in more than two decades. It's about a 600 mile drive down I-70 from Kansas City to Denver, but that didn't stop some Chiefs fans from making the trek to support their team. And the K-State football team called last week's last minute loss a wake up call, and now they have a chance to even the record against Louisiana. K-State's offense had its struggles, but when it was on, it looked pretty good. I talked with Salina South head coach Sam Sellers before kickoff, and he said beating Hutchinson last year may give his team more confidence this year, but he says it definitely doesn't guarantee them a win. Well, when a team's top three scorers only get a combined 13 points, they could be in for a long night. That is, unless other players step up, and that's exactly what some of the Wildcats did when Marcus Foster, Shane South well and Thomas Gibson shots just didn't fall. Spring is here and it finally feels like it. Fans could enjoy the weather while they watched Wichita State take on the number nine ranked Cal State Fullerton. What a beautiful day it was. Just makes you want to be outside. Kill Elam on the mound. Not the start he would want though. One on for J.D. Davis. He blasts one through the gap and off the wall. That brings in one run and the Titans go up one nothing in the first. No problem though. The bottom of the inning one on for Casey Gillespie, and this one is out of here. A big rip to right field, and it's gone. Two-run homer for the big guy, and the Shocks take a 2-1 lead. It would be short-lived as Fullerton tied it up. But Tanner Dearman would save the day with a walk-off single. The Shockers win game two, three to two. They play game three tomorrow at one. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs haven't had a playoff win in over 20 years. Today, they appeared to be on the right track to end that drought. But they'd have to do it without pro bowler Jamal Charles, who was hurt in the very first minutes of the game. It didn't seem like it was going to be a problem at first. Up 10-7, Alex Smith hitting Donnie Avery for 79 yards down the middle and a 17-7 lead. They piled it on in the first half. Smith with a shovel pass to Anthony Sherman, and KC was up 24-7, boosted it up to 31-10 at halftime. Their largest lead was 38-10 in the second half. But then the Chiefs offense stalled, but the Colts didn't. Luck to Cody Fleener. Chiefs still up 41-31 then. And talk about a lucky bounce. At the goal line, Brown was stripped by Eric Berry, but Luck picks it up and dives into the end zone for the touchdown. You got to look at it again. You can practically hear the Kansas City fans yelling at their television sets in disbelief. 44-38 now. Chiefs still up, but not for long. Luck to T.Y. Hilton down the middle. 45-44, the Colts take their first lead of the game. So it's all down to fourth and 11. Chiefs season on the line. Smith up to Dwayne Bowe. He makes the catch, but it's out of bounds. Colts stage the second largest comeback in NFL playoff history, outscoring the Chiefs 35 to 13, and the Chiefs lose 45-44 to end their season. Well, McPherson and Hayden have only met once in the state tournament, and that was way back in 1965. And McPherson won the game by 10 points. And now they're going at it again in the high school version of the Big Dance. Head coach Kirk Kinneman looking for his fifth state title, which would give him the most in school history. McPherson getting the game started quickly. Hayden would try to hang with them for a while, but turnovers helped the Bullpups gain momentum. Sophomore Drew Pyle had a great first half shooting. He was three for four from the arc and ended the night with 21 points. I was just knocking down shots. I, I relied on my team to get me the ball and I just made the shots. But he wasn't the only one. McPherson had six guys score in the first half to help them get the 25 to 14 lead going into the locker room. And in the second half, they continued to pile it on. <laughs> Hayden would get it with an eight, but no closer. As McPherson skated their way to the 57 to 40 win, giving head coach Kirk Kinneman his fifth win, one he got to share with his player and son, Kyler. I'm having a hard time talking because it's a pretty emotional deal when you have kids that invest like these guys do. and, and uh, when your own son's a part of that, it's, it's really special. They sent seniors Peter and Ryan Horton off with a victory. It's awesome to end it, but it doesn't feel like it's over yet. An injured senior, Keyshawn Sewell, not only got to suit up because his teammate gave him his spot, but he also got to be the first to touch the state championship trophy.
You know, he's the best teammate we've ever had. Uh, he's, you know, he's the best guy we have. You know, it, it was it was terrible to see him go down with that injury that ended the season. So, you know, it was really important for us to let him suit up the last game and let him hold the trophy. Those guys, I love them. Um, they carried me through my injury all season. I've never met a greater group of guys, and it was absolutely the best feeling I've ever had in the world. So, unbelievable, unbelievable. You can see Coach Jaden Adams standing on the sidelines at every practice and every game. Ever since I've been around football, it's something that gets me excited like nothing else does. He's part of a boy football team that's tearing through the competition with the senior class that has been playing together since they were little and are no longer just a team, but... Brothers, I, I could say, I know we've been through everything together. We know a lot about each other. We. We hang out together. We trust each other on the field, if you can put it that way. I mean. Just two years ago, Coach Adams was number 30, sophomore star running back, averaging 200 yards a game until... He collapsed shortly before halftime. It was an experience that I'd never been through in life, uh, naturally very scared. He was taken to the hospital with a traumatic brain injury and was in a coma for about a week. We always knew he... He'd come back to us. Yes, I never doubted that. He did come back, but number 30 did not. When I started to realize I couldn't ever play football anymore, it's probably, well, for sure the toughest thing ever in my life. He wasn't ready to give up. He really seems as if he's been coaching longer than he actually has. My dad had drilled into me the win each day and make every day a great day. And now his impact is still felt in the stadium on Friday nights and every day at practice. He started it with us. It'd be wrong to have him not finish it with us, too. It would not be the same for me if I could not be able to be with the team. I mean, it's just something I love to do. The sound of a bat hitting a ball. It could mean a single, a double, or even a home run. Yeah, it's one of the best hits we've had today. But for the Salina South softball team, it's the sound of hope. Every hit you get, you get money added on, so the more hits, the better not only do you do personally, but um, you do for raising money for cancer. Head coach Kenny Waldman put together the Hits for Hope campaign. It raises money for research at the Tammy Walker Cancer Center. It's a great feeling knowing that I can help out my community because like our community does so much for us. And for many of the Cougars, cancer isn't just a face in the crowd. It hits much closer to home. My mom had it in 08 and my grandma got diagnosed with it in 2011. I have had a couple family members pass away and currently my uncle is in Remission. My great uncle and my grandpa have cancer. So I had a grandpa who passed away from cancer. Not all of the work takes place on the field. The players go out and build a team of sponsors. I want my athletes to be involved with the community. I think that's very important. Throughout the season, the girls raise 25 cents for each single, 50 cents for a double, 75 cents for a triple, and each home run's worth a dollar. And each time a sponsored player crosses home plate, it's a buck twenty-five. Every little like hit you get, every little like twenty-five cents that you make, like it helps. One, two, here we go. The extra pressure could help when they're down in the count. I try to make uh, better hits and better decisions when I go up there. The game is still a game, but these girls are playing for more than just numbers on a scoreboard. If they could just find a cure and just knock it out, because then no one would have to go through the pain and suffering. 